course, this time we're going to be learning about functions and defining them. Right, so we've already learned about built-in functions like print, um, len, so length, and input. And Python provides several of these inbuilt functions, right? Um, so besides this, though, you can also write your own functions, and this would almost be like a mini program inside another program. To understand it better, let's try an example. So let's open a new file, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to first type in def, um, let's say intro. Right, and here I'm going to say print and you can kind of just create the code, uh, create the program along with me. Okay, um, I think actually that's pretty much it. So this is basically what the define function would, what the define option would kind of look like, right? So basically um, what you're doing over here is, um, well, the first line, that's the main part where we're actually defining the function, right? So the intro part, this part is like the name of the function. So you know how you have like print or like even input? We're creating one that's now going to be intro. Right, so that's our new um, that's our new function, right? So um, if I want to call it or use it, I will say intro with the parentheses. So now the next part is basically what should happen if that function is called, right? So if I call intro, then basically it should ask, it should say hello and it should ask for the name. Um, now um, you. Uh, so if I call print, uh, if I call intro, then it should print this and then ask for this. So you might wonder why is this important? Well, a lot of times you need to repeat the same long codes over and over again. Now, of course, you might say that you can use loops, but actually you can't always because let's say you have to add the same code, right? But at different points in time, different positions, different points in the code, right? And it can't happen in like a loop, so it can't happen all at once over and over again. So um, the program should ex execute it all at once, right? So essentially what this define function is going to do is that it's going to make your life much easier and much more efficient. And um, actually, I'll explain to you how exactly this happens when we learn um, the calculator um, programs in the following video, right? Um, anyway, so let's say um, we have this, right? Um, so if I want, I can just say intro over here. So I'm calling the function over here. I'm saying that this should happen. Let me just save that and say intro, right? And now it asked me for my name because I've defined a function now. And so I can just say Gen Z coders over here, and then it terminates, right? I know this may not be as, well, it might be a bit confusing, but I hope you at least understood essentially the essence of it. I'll go into the details a bit later, um, in probably in the next video, okay? So anyway, now let's talk about the return function, right? So when you call the len function and pass it through an argument like, let's say, hello, um, so let's do that actually right it would give you five it uh, the integer five which is basically the length of the string you passed in general the value that a function call um, evaluates to is called the return value of the function when creating a function using the def statement you can specify what the return value should be with a return statement a return statement consists of the return keyword um, and the value or expression that the function should return so hopefully you, you kind of got an idea of what that is. And so now I'm just going to show you an example of it in, um, in use, basically, right? So let me open up a file. Yeah, here we go. So, okay. So the first, um, the very first line Import random. We learned about this in the previous video. This is the random module. We're going to need it for this, right? 
So the first line, import random, um, I hope that's clear. Second line, print, uh, uh, please ask your question. So basically what this, um, what this program is going to do is it's basically going to be like a magic eight ball sort of a thing. So the person asks a question and then randomly the, um, the, uh, what do you call it? The program is just going to give you an answer, right? So if I ask a question, I can ask like, is my birthday on July 25th or something like that, right? I can ask that and um, then basically the um, program would give me an answer. Very randomly, of course, but it would give me an answer. So basically that's the entire purpose. So over here, the first thing is it asks, uh, it the program tells you to ask the question. And over here, question is equal to input, so that's where you type in your question. Now, this next part, this is actually the most important part. So what we're doing over here is we are defining a function, right? And this function, the name of this function is get answer, right? And in the parentheses, what I've put is answer number, right? So that's kind of like the value sort of a thing. So I can say if answer number is equal to one, then return it as certain. Whereas elif, if I say answer number is equal to two, return that versus whatever, whatever, right? So basically the return value, so what should be the output if I say um, get answer would be dependent on this, right? Now, I, this might be a bit confusing, but you'll probably understand it when I actually run the program. So over here, I've also defined, I've initialize another variable and this is r right this is the random integer between one to nine because over here if you see we have nine different messages that can be um basically portrayed displayed by the program right nine different messages so here what this r does is it picks a random number between one and nine now the next variable that i've created is fortune right and it says get answer r now get answer as you can see is the same um is the same uh, function that i've defined over here now when i say get answer and i put r in the brackets r as we can see is a random integer so it could either be like say let's take three for example right so if r is equal to three then what this would do is it would return yes all right so um that's kind of what this does i'm not really sure if you've uh, understood it if you have any questions please don't hesitate to comment um you can even contact the email um i'm pretty all right with that um and i would probably reply to you guys i know this could be a bit confusing it was a bit confusing when i learned it as well but anyways, so yeah, so that's basically what it's going to do. It's going to get the answer and it's going to store it in that fortune variable. In the last line, now what's going to happen is it's going to print the fortune. So over here where I've said um, get answer, right? So let's say r is equal to 3. Then when you say get answer r, you're going to go and ahead. What the program's going to do is it's going to go to this part, right? Because that's equal to 3. Then the fortune is going to store this part right? It's going to store this part in it, right? And when I say print fortune, fortune would be yes, because essentially that is the outcome, that is the output that the function gives us, right? So let's run it, um, and hopefully it will give you some more clarity this time. So let's ask a question. Let's say, um, is my name Gen Z coders. And it says ask again later, right? Because it just picked a totally random number and it just picked, um, and it kind of just gave me a result. So let's try this again and it'll probably give us a different response. Let's say we can probably ask the same question again, right? And it says concentrate and ask again. Again, this was a different outcome. So let's see. Um, ask again later was five and concentrated and ask again was six, right? So basically it picks, a com it's completely random. It picks a completely random number and it returns a certain value, right? And so that was essentially what I kind of wanted to explain to you guys in this video, what the define function is and what the return function is. And usually you use them together. A return function kind of defines the, or tells the program what the return value should be Oh, for your defined function, right? For your own function. Um, well, 
anyways, I hope I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned quite a bit. I know it might be a bit confusing or at the moment, but in the next video, I'm gonna explain to, uh, I'm gonna explain this a little bit more in a, in a little bit more detail. So um, please watch that video and it'll help you get some more clarity. See you the next time. Happy coding.